My name is Floyd. I'm a Melbourne-based chef, pastry chef, chocolatier, and thanks so much for checking out the first video on the channel. For the last 15 years, I've been involved in making chocolate for my small business, Coco Rhapsody. So I thought, what better place to start than with the actual conching or grinding of the raw materials into chocolate. So here we go. The good news is that when it comes to making chocolate, the process is actually really simple. It does, however, require one piece of equipment, and this is a stone grinder. The other raw materials required to complete the task are cocoa butter, sugar, in this case raw sugar because this will be a 75% raw chocolate, and raw Peruvian cocoa nibs. Bear in mind that the same principles apply regardless whether it's a raw or a roasted bean. The only consideration with a raw is that you might want to grind it slower to generate less heat and keep it below 42 degrees, maximum 47. On the subject of a stone grinder, I have seen various forums where people are using a cold press juicer such as a champion to grind the cocoa into a kind of a paste that looks a bit like chocolate. Now that will give you some success, there's no doubt about it. So despite thinking I know better, I went ahead and tried it and there's a limit to how fine you're going to get the end result. And that's where a stone grinder comes in because it goes very slowly and then over a period of three days, you'll end up with a super fine texture, which is a result that is commonly referred to as coverture chocolate, which means covering. You would have seen this phrase before. What we're gonna do now is actually have a look at a time lapse of chocolate being conched from its raw ingredients over a period of 72 hours into the fine, finished, velvety smooth product that we call chocolate. One other tool that I'm going to use is what is known as a grindometer. Now, I don't know if you can see that in the video, but this thing has a channel that gets deeper from 100 micron down to zero. So the result we're after is 25 micron. So what I'm going to do is every day take a little bit of the forming chocolate out of the container and run the scraper over the top of it, and you will see how it changes over every 24 hour period. The final period, it'll be around 20, 25 micron. Now on that subject, we wanna get to 30 at least and below, because at that point, chocolate has its smooth texture in which you can't really perceive particles. So let's get to it. I could um, speed things up a little bit through putting the nibs in a food processor and blitzing them, or I could heat them up. But since they're raw nibs, I won't be doing that. And aside from that, I just wanted to do this whole process with an absolute minimum of equipment. We're at day one, you can see that there is a large dispersion of particles around 45 with some serious grit up in the deeper areas of the device. Day two, we've got an, a fairly solid grouping of particles around 45, with some isolated particles right down the lower reaches of the grindometer. And no, this is not a weather report.
Day three, the moment of truth. Look at that. We're down at around 25 micron. So I think we could call that job done. All right, there we have it. We've now got ourselves a well-conched 75% raw dark chocolate, which when taken through the tempering process will look like this. And more importantly, it'll sound like this. And thanks again for watching the video. I really hope that it has been of some value to you. If that is the case, the usual blurb, which is like, subscribe, but more importantly, leave some comments so that it can help me shape future content. And one last thing, I will be uploading these videos on Chocolate Fundamentals every Friday. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And remember, there's no better reason to take off a mask than to eat chocolate. Ciao.